I thought it was about time I looked at a Talking Heads song and I get numerous requests to look at Talking Heads and the reason I've not covered any of their music up to this point on this channel is because from the point of view of making guitar tuition videos they're actually quite a tricky band to deal with and I think with a lot of my favourite Talking Heads songs they're not really about the guitar though they often contain some really interesting guitar parts. The guitar is often just in a supporting role. So the song I've decided to go for is Life During Wartime from the 1979 album Fear of Music. I think that was their second or no, their third Talking Heads album. And I think with the earlier Talking Heads stuff, it's played in more of a traditional bass guitar drums kind of a way. And Life During Wartime, not only is it a great song, but it contains a great and funky guitar part that I think stands up well on its own and I hope will make for a good lesson video. So let's get to it. We've got a couple of quite simple riffs and I think the thing to watch out for here is that you're getting the rhythm and the feel correct. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about that too. Well, like with many funk type of songs, this song is quite minimal harmonically speaking. The verse is all based around an A or an A minor chord and then the chorus is all based around an E chord. Let's kick off with the main riff which is the verse riff of the song. It goes like this. And you can see that it's all played um, in and around the fifth position here and I'm thinking A major or A minor. All of the notes in the riff are taken from that chord shape. We're starting off with these double stops. So we've got the fifth fret on the A and the D and then I'm hammering down to the seventh fret on the A and the D. So I'm playing the fifth fret here just by pressing those two notes down with my first finger, hammering down with my third and fourth fingers. Then I've got a double stop at the fifth fret on the D and the G strings and then I'm coming back to the seventh fret on the A and the D. Next we have this. So a double stop, fifth fret on the D and the G, and I'm hammering down onto the sixth fret of the G. So you're getting that minor to major sound, quite a bluesy sound that I think. I think sometimes you can just hear the fifth fret on the B string come through as well. So if you're pressing down with your first finger, you might just allow that note to come through too. And then we've got five to seven again, the double stops on the A and the D strings. Uh, then we do this again. So that's exactly the same as the first bit of the riff. The timing is a little bit different. I'm going to come on to that in a moment, but we're playing the same notes again. Then we play that seventh fret double stop one more time and the riff rounds off with this. Just a, a series of accents on this A minor triad. So it's the fifth fret on the top three strings. playing that six times. So that's the whole riff. So those are the notes you need to be playing, but the most important thing here is the rhythm. So I'm going to count this one out for you in a little bit of detail because I think this is absolutely crucial if you want to get this riff sounding as it should do. So we're starting off, we're coming in on beat two. We've got one, two, and three, and rest. And then we've got one, and two, and three, and rest. And then one, and two, three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and. So the interesting thing I think here is in bar three, when, when the riff starts repeating, we're playing the same the same notes but in a slightly different rhythm. The first time we hear that is coming in on beat two. It's one, two and three and and then here 
is one and two, three and four and. So it's, it's as if we're just bringing those notes forward by half a beat. So we're now coming in on the end of one. It's one and two, three and four and. So important to be playing that syncopation properly, I think. Another important thing that's going to help with the feel of this riff is thinking about your strumming hand and how that's going to play this riff. I don't know if there's necessarily a right or wrong, but when you watch David Byrne play this live, he seems to be just keeping his strumming hand moving up and down all the time. And I don't think he plays the riff exactly the same as on the recording in any of the live videos I've seen, but his feel is all just coming from keeping this hand moving up and down. So that would look something like this. We've got one, two, See, I'm just keeping my strumming hand moving one and two and three and four and and then I'm just squeezing down the appropriate notes at the right moment. You might like to just allow a few little scratches and things to come through. It's not a particularly scratchy funky part this one I don't think but it it, it doesn't harm the groove just to keep this hand moving and occasionally have some of those little percussive scratches in there. Um, on this bit at the end of the riff I found myself playing that with all down strokes and then just bouncing the first finger of my left hand just to get each of those chordal hits nice and short. But that works equally well with a down up I think. So that's our main riff. Let's move on to the chorus, which as I said is all based around a simple E chord. And the basic idea of the chorus is just this. We've got two, three, four. It's that kind of rhythm on an E chord. Then we're just adding in some little, little single note bits as well, I think taken from the E minor pentatonic scale. So uh, we're coming in, we're pushing into the chorus on the end of beat four. It's one and two and three and four and two and three and four. So we're playing on the end of four, then the end of three, and then the end of four again. So lots of syncopation. It's two and three and four. Then we've got our first little single note line here. It's just B A on the A string and then G to open low E. And you're just playing that in the gaps between those chordal accents. Two and three and four. Two and three. playing that three times I think then the last time we've got a slightly different run down to that we just got E to D and then B A G and then that takes us back to the the main riff again so um, just play through all of the chorus for you slowly we've got two three and four to the main riff again. Again I'm just keeping my strumming hand moving up and down and then I might get some extra little chord hits or scratches in there that all helps with the feel of it. Just one other bit of the song that might be worth mentioning and that's this little guitar overdub that you can hear towards the end of the track just going like this. And 
It's just a little upbeat part based on an A minor triad. So A, C, E played at the 14th fret on the G string and 13 on the B, 12 on the high E. And it's all played on the upbeat. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and So that is how you play, how I think you play life during wartime. Hope you enjoy learning it. If you'd like to see a bit more Talking Heads, let me know what you think might be appropriate. Preferably something without some mad Adrian Ballou guitar solo, because I don't think that's really something I could handle particularly well. Um, thank you for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.